<coughs> Greetings friends and welcome to Dreams version 2.52. We have a bunch of new features in this update and I am very excited to get stuck in with them. Oh, whoop, whoop. I'm sure that the first thing you'll notice is the fabulous new visualizer that I've got over here. So I've got some music playing and it's sounding fabulous and now I've got this visualizer which is using the spectral bands uh, sort of within the music channel and just displaying them in a way that's pretty cool. So the way that we're going to do that friends is I'm going to open my bit of logic here and I've got my song over here, it's looking cool. And then I have the music channel which is just a tool that you get if you go to modes, you go over to sound mode, then you grab yourself tools, well sorry not tools but rather gadgets, and you can grab either the master mixer or you can get the general channel, music channel, voice channel, all those sorts of things. And when you go L1 and square, you can now go onto this chap over here. Well, first, actually, we've got the EQ filter, and this has some spectrogrammy vibes, which is very cool. Didn't have that before. And we've also got the spectral analyzer. Now, as you can see, we've got a bit of a spectral analysis here, and it's also great for doing things like seeing if your music or your sound effects are like a bit too loud. So if they're in this sort of a range between like 40 and um, the kind of like 20-ish or so on, um, or, or even pretty much anything like less than 8, like that's a pretty good um, sound, like people will be able to hear it, it's not too crazy, but if it's at zero then it's super loud, and if it's at this range then it's going to be like really really quiet. So I'm just going to pause this music just for a sec. -y. Now something else that we've got here is the spectral bands output. And the way that it's sort of split here is that there's eight different bands and they kind of refer to different sounds. Think of like the lowest ones as like your bass sounds and then the high ones as kind of your fluty, really like kind of high pitched sort of sounds. So when we have this turned on, what we're going to have is connecting this to a splitter. So we're going to go L1 and square, go to our music channel analysis, and we're going to take the spectral bands output and we're going to connect it to a splitter and we're going to get eight outputs which are each sort of represented by eight of these different colors. So when the song plays and we've got a bit of bass going, then you're going to see the red. And then when you've got all the other various sounds, they're going to be represented by these various different bands. Now the way that I've done this is I've just taken little text displayers and I've just made them little sort of squares and I've done it so that they are um, they're sort of alignment is sort of to the bottom so I've just said vertical alignment bottom so that means that you can adjust them like so um, so that they just extend upwards and not sort of downwards at the same time so I've just got that little chap there and then each of these keyframes just take it to a particular height now I did use a grid for this so that they are in line um, so that's sort of just a useful thing to do if I might uh, for example just one thing that I could do to just demonstrate it for you is to just delete one of these keyframes, let's say for like the last one over here. So what I'll do is I'll go into animate, grab a keyframe, throw it down just over there, then L1 and square on this chat. Well, actually you don't even have to do L1 and square really, you can just do X. Put on a little bit of a grid snap and then take it to your desired position. So if I look at one of these dudes, oh there we go, that's perfect. Perfectly aligned, lovely stuff. So I've just taken that text displayer, I've just increased its height, and then I'll just connect it here. And now when I play the music, it's going to start working with, uh, you know, correlating to the 8th band um, in terms of the old spectral band. So this is how you have a cool, nice visualizer effect with like the multiple different colored bars going up and down and all that sort of business. And I think that's looking pretty sweet indeed, digging that. Um, but now I want to show you, you can actually also do it so that it's not aligned to the bottom. You can have it um, aligned sort of normally, so the bars will go in both directions. So let me just do a bit of a demonstration here. Welcome to Dreams version 2.52. Woohoo! So as you can see with that little bit of uh, dialogue, now these bands, which are animated just like the other one, um, they go sort of in both directions, and it creates that sort of classic... Like Welcome to Dreams version when you get like a call from someone and it shows the little what are we looking at today? <laughs> you know the little vocal you'll have to jumpy downy spectrogram business, which I think is pretty sweet. And I literally copy pasted this this whole thing. Um, I copy pasted the little the um, splitter 
and all the keyframes and then each of those individual uh, little text displays and the only thing that I did differently was I I'm just gonna go into this you'll see here that it's now the vertical alignment is middle rather than bottom so that means it can extend in both directions I didn't do anything else I didn't change the keyframes or whatever whatever I just made sure that each of them correlate to their own keyframes uh, now something else that I did differently here is that I actually connected that to the voice channel but the voice channel of course works the exact same it's got the spectral bands it's got the signal level it's got the spectral analyzer so on and so forth it works in the exact same way as the music channel um, and so you can use it to do lovely voice things like that <coughs> now if you just connect these things to the voice channel there is only one voice channel at the moment so if you just connect these things and leave it as is these are going to be this one is going to be jumping up when it hears voice sort of when it hears like someone speaking or any sort of sound in the voice channel and so is this one so to make it so that only one of them is like active at a time you're only going to see the sort of the vibrations as it were um, on one of these rather than both of these is I just put the audio in a little timeline and on this timeline I made it so that only one of these splitters is activated at a time or this little uh, this node that connects it to the voice channel only one of them is connected at a time so this is the dude on the left speaking so when the dude on the left is speaking then these bands will start moving when the dude on the right is speaking uh, then it's going to make his ones activated over here as you can see and the logic is exactly the same as the visualizer I also did a little silly sort of like lip sync Welcome mouth flap vibe here so that when they speak it looks like their mouth is moving what are we looking at today Colonel? and that works exactly You'll the same to. I just took this I didn't need all of these various keyframes I just did two in the sort of third and fourth bands and made this one increase the height of the mouth and the mouth is of course just a little text displayer that looks like a rectangle um, so this increases the height and this one increases the sort of or decreases the width so it just gives a kind of uh, a very vague semblance of like a mouth moving without having to do any sort of um, animation yourself so this is very useful for like communication with characters or if you have kind of like an artwork with like a just a mouth that moves um, and it works pretty well with you know Welcome when the character is speaking and when they stop two. speaking um, what are we looking and at it just saves you a lot of effort and a lot of logic, a lot of thermo, because you don't have to animate all the mouths and stuff. Lovely stuff. So that is how you get like a nice little voiceover. And you can actually use that exact same logic for the old lip sync thing that I've also developed. So for example, if you have a song, I'm just going to turn this on again. I'm going to turn this one off. And now I'm going to go into my little lip sync logic. And I'm going to turn on a song that has a bit of... Um, a little bit of singing in it so I'm gonna go over this logic in a second I just want to show you how it's demonstrated but oh no friends look I've got a whole bunch of cameras over here um, and I've got my character sort of dancing about but it's really hard to actually get a look at my character because there's all these cameras in the way which is actually a problem that I have all the time so what we used to do back in the day is we would turn off uh, cameras and lighting but would also turn off electronics so that was a bit of a pain because if you wanted to animate a character you'd have to turn off lights and cameras and you wouldn't be able to see your animation uh, your timeline and stuff anymore but now they've thankfully separated this into two separate categories so you can turn off the cameras which I often find get in the way this is a little bit of an extreme example but yeah just to demonstrate and then you can carry on with your editing and so on and so forth which I find just an excellent feature I love this it's simple but it's it's great super useful but to continue with the lip syncing vibe, let me someone demonstrate. So my character here is singing along with the specifically the vocal part of the song. So how did I do this, friends? So this logic is the logic for the visualizer part of the uh, sort of sound. So we've got the lovely visualizer there. Um, but how do we get the mouth flaps to spe specifically be related to the like vocal part of it? Well, what I did here, friends, is I actually took the original song that we've got over here, lovely stuff, and of course everything here is in the music channel. 
Then I copied that and I deleted all of the uh, sort of other instruments that were going on there. And I went into the studio, or sorry, the timeline over here. And I set the sound channel to voice. So now we have this. We, we kind of have a copy of it. So this one has the voice and all the instruments. And this one has just the voice. This one is set the music channel. This one is set to just the uh, voice channel. So now because that's the voice channel, um, I can just connect, just like I did before, I connect the voice channel to a splitter. This changes the sort of width of the mouth. This one changes the sort of height of the mouth. It looks kind of crazy now. It's, it's definitely better to overextend um, because if you make it very slight, uh, you're not going to see those changes as much. I mean, like you saw, I made this, the length of the these sort of spectral bands like really high, but generally they don't even go halfway there. Um, and I'm going to sort of talk more a little, about, a little bit more about that in a moment. But yeah, so all I did was I changed this to a uh, voice channel and just make sure that you change the whole timeline to voice channel. Uh, because if you change the sound channel of like specific elements, it doesn't always work. So just something to consider then. And then as these sort of third and fourth bands move up, as we have here, the mouth sort of moves around, um, which is pretty sweet. And you'll see like as the voice gets quiet, the mouth sort of goes back to its resting position. You can, of course, connect this to um, the third and fourth bands of just the music channel. But unfortunately, it's not always clear, like, because this is sort of music and it's kind of has a bit of a, an amorphous nature. It's not like the third and the fourth bands or whichever bands will just be singing. So there'll be other instruments in those bands. So even if the person isn't singing, but it's picking up sort of sound from those bands, uh, then it will still move the mouth. So that's why I separated it to have just the music channel and just the voice channel. And you can, of course, go into this and delete the voice, uh, the voice out of this um, so that you don't have sort of like two voices playing because it will kind of sound like there's two voices playing. But yeah, so that's, that's how you do a little bit of a lip sync. And um, yeah, once again, the mouth is just a text display that I've changed the width and the height of. So that is how you do some of the audio things. Now, the last uh, section I want to talk about in relation to uh, audio is the fact that your personal settings in dreams actually make a difference so for example right now I've got voice over volume at 10 and I've got sound effects and music at 5 um, so let's just have a look see as we can see these are about here if I go into my personal settings and I make these 10 now you'll see that they reach much higher so this can be problematic um, in some situations because when we use these spectral bands it's kind of it's sort of seeing it as volume so however much volume it is putting out it will increase the output of those particular spectral bands so if people have their own customized settings um, it can actually change for example how much the mouth is moving or how much this particular visualizer is jumping up and down. It'll kind of scale it to their particular settings. So that's something to uh, just to consider. You might want to mention that if you have any particular um, creations that you're making and you're making use of the spectral bands, it's important that you um, uh, do it in such a way that you kind of specify, okay, this is what your settings should be. Alrighty, friends, and that's uh, all we have to talk about in terms of the audio. Actually, friends, there's one more thing related to audio, and that is if we go into a particular sound, any sound, it can be a bit of music, it can be like a, a little bit of a voice thing, for example. So actually, I could go to my, my like voiceover thing here, where you're getting like communicated with by your commander. Um, and if, for example, you wanted to not be playing that on the sort of... If you have like a TV with like a stereo set, you can actually do something like this, which is going to panning and you can change it to uh, produce audio out of the controller itself. So that's the, the PS4 or the PS5 controllers like little speaker.
And but you could do this before, but now you can actually specify if you want it to be player one, player two, player three, player four, all of these various little bits. So like one example of this is like if you're playing like a racing game, you could do something like, um, <laughs> uh, you know, whoever's the winner, it'll take, you know, whichever controller they are and be like winner. Um, and the others are going to be like loser, <laughs> for example. Um, and you could play that out of their specific um, controllers. Um, there's tons of uh, use cases for that. Um, basically, just whenever you want to specify a specific player, um, you can play it out of their controller uh, just by going to panning of any sound, whether it's music, whether it's voice. So that's um, another awesome aw uh, audio feature. Woohoo! Next up, friends, we're going to move on to the visual changes that have been made, which are pretty sweet. Um, and the first thing that I'm going to demonstrate is the new neatness uh, setting on sculpts. So, for example, here I have a sculpt that is pretty loose and that has its neatness turned up. So if I go on and square and I go to Fleck properties, so neatness is specifically in relation to flex and the neater it is, the more sort of aligned it is to a particular grid. So if it's on zero, it's kind of just, it looks very classic. You know, the flex are kind of all over the place. If it's 100%, it'll look a lot more gritty. But this is also very much related to the uh, looseness of a particular uh, sculpt. So, for example, as I change it, this is still very gritty. But if you adjust it, it kind of, this is gritty, but there's kind of, the looseness makes it so that there are quite a few extra flex. So to get that specific um, sort of feeling of being very neat and being on a grid, you really have to adjust looseness. Um, so there, for example, as you can see, the looseness is quite low. So the flex are very, very small, um, but it's very nice and neat. So if we take like a new little cube over here, um, let's say all of the default settings, that's looking cool. I'm just going to go neatness, 100%. Uh, it's also important to use inner properties for, for this. So for example, you might make this a bit darker. Change the color of this. Um, uh, change the looseness as you desire. Once again, you really have to, you can't just you know change the looseness haphazardly because you won't get that nice grid vibe. Um, so, but if you do find that little sweet spot between looseness um, and neatness, you'll end up getting a pretty a pretty sweet uh, shape. Now, this works best for sort of cubes and that sort of business. If you start to make the shape a bit um, funkier, you'll still very much get like a, it's like neater, you know, you'll, you can see that it's kind of aligned to something, but because it's a bit of a weird shape, it can sometimes struggle with making it look as neat as, for example, something like this, something that's very flat. So great for tiled surfaces, great for like floors and all those sorts of things. It doesn't require um, too much in terms of, you know, creating like a million different uh, sculpts that you stick together you know you can create a pretty pretty sweet pattern here not perfect but um, uh, definitely a, a great little tool there and then um, while we're sort of still on the section of the visible let's go over the new text display features so actually before we jump onto that I want to show you with um, with great excitement and joy that the sticker mode rendering issues that we had in the last update um, have now been uh, in part removed. So, for example, this is just a little text display, a bit of text, and um, it's being displayed or sort of projected onto a cube. And in the last update, uh, around the edges, we had like a bit of a rendering issue. There was a little bit of sort of overlap, and it was looking a bit fuzzy, and it was looking kind of not super great. Um, but now that has been uh, improved. Uh, that's actually been adjusted and it's looking great. There is, um, however, a few issues with colors uh, that <laughs> some people have mentioned. I've seen a few things on the tweeters where people said that their, the color of their stickers uh, changed after the update. So there have been some, some uh, discrepancies when it comes to colors since this update, but I'm sure that will be fixed in a, in a bug fix soon. Alrighty, friends, but the more sort of exciting things when it comes to text displays is the lovely new um, color changing features, the size changing features, um, and transparency, which you can all now change within one text display. So this is one text display with a bunch of different colors in it, 
and this is a one text display with different size text in it. So you kind of are using HTML vibes here. So you can't actually see it once you've typed it in. But I've got a bunch of text here. It looks pretty sweet and you can like highlight specific parts of it as you desire. So I'm going to demonstrate this by just throwing in a little text displayer. Lovely stuff. And this text displayer will say noise. My dude. Okay, sweet. So we have our little text display. I'm going to put it in scene vibes. Now, <clears throat> if we want to change the color of this text normally, we can, of course, just go move this over here and go woohoo and have a great time. But if, for example, we wanted to do something like we have here, where we have a certain type of text color and we want to change specific parts of it, um, and this is very versatile. So, for example, if I'm like, mm, actually, I want the text to be black on a white background, um, it's great because then you can adjust all the text that is the kind of normie text and that specific text uh, can be changed. Uh, or sorry, it'll stay constant even though the normie text is changing. So these inputs will override the uh, settings that you have on the text displayer itself. Sweet, so the way that we change the text of something, the color of the text, is we go open angle bracket and we'll go color you can spell it the US or the UK way. And you can go color equals. And now there's two ways to do this. You can go um, a little, uh, what do you call it? Quotation marks, right? Quotation marks, and you can say like red. So now I've got color equals, and then quotation marks, red. And then I'm going to go close this. And now you'll see all of the text is now red. So if we want to just make the word noise red, then we're going to go open this particular bracket. Then we're going to go slash. And then we're going to go color. Color. And you can spell it either way, of course. So for example, I'll spell it like this now. And then you close that angle bracket. And now, so it kind of applies that color, which is red. And then you create another little angle bracket, very much HTML vibes. And you will then stop that uh, that sort of effect where the uh, where you put that kind of closing statement. Lovely stuff. So that's how you change color one way. Now I'm going to show you another way to change color. So we're going to go color equals, and now we're going to do um, basically the like hex code vibes. So Tapjaws actually has a great thing on his website. I'll link it below which sort of shows you different ways. Um, it's like a color picker and then it shows you that particular code. But basically the vibe is um, I can have like FF and then 0000, zero, zero, zero. and this is a particular color um, and if I do this, so it's actually red. That's pretty funny. Um, so now I have red but actually let me make it There we go. So now we have like a pinky, violety, not 100% sure, let's say pink. We have a pinky sort of color, and that's looking pretty sweet. And once again, if we want to change the, uh, if we want to make that end at a particular point, we just go like this, and then we go color. Schwang. So now we have this business. Uh, we've done it once with sort of using like a string, the name of the color. Then we've done it with the, uh, the like hex code. And now the last thing that I want to demonstrate is transparency as well. This is all in relation to color. We're also going to go over size. So color equals, let me do a little hex code or hashtag. Hashtag FF, um, FF00. And then we're also going to do, uh, let's say, 70. So after you do those six numbers slash digits, you can have another two numbers afterwards between 0 and 99, and that is transparency. So by default, it's 100, so you can see it sort of completely. Um, but then you can also make it 0, 0, which kind of makes it invisible. So if we make it 70, it's kind of like 70% visible. Um, so as you can see here, if I turn this business off, it's kind of like the dude part specifically is like a little bit more transparent so that if I have something kind of behind it 
might sort of sort of show up. I can't see it super well. I'm not sure if this is if this is big facts, but yeah. So basically, you can adjust transparency that way. Um, I'm not sure if I've maybe done it slightly wrong or if it's bugged, but yes, that is how you change transparency. <laughs> Lol. Um, it looks kind of it does look kind of transparent actually. Yeah, it's kind of like almost faded out. Okay, sweet. So that is how we do text things in regards to that. And now I want to just show you size related stuff. So if I have one here, um, that's looking cool. And now I want to make it so that the bro part here is um, larger. So for this one, I'm going to go size equals 50 and then close. And then, of course, if I want to make it so that it's only the bro part, I'm going to go little closey, closey slash. And I'm going to go size. Close that bracket. And now I can say like sup. So that only specific parts of it are actually made larger. Um, and this is always relative to this particular text. So for example, if I make this bigger, it will get bigger as well. It's not going to like remain at like a constant 50 and kind of become smaller than other text if you change the size of it. So that is how we change the size of text as well, just as we've done here. Um, yes, friends, so this is some of the lovely new text related features. So the rendering has been improved. You can do all sorts of stuff with the new um, text gadget in terms of changing specific text color, changing the size, um, changing a bit of transparency, making it look a little bit faded out. Um, and yes, so those are the new text features, which are pretty fabulous. Uh, then one more feature, friends, which I'm unfortunately not going to be able to help you with because it's maths related, is the new pi. Uh, basically, they've added pi in, and of course, it's 3.14, blah, 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 blah. Um, and if you're a smart maths kid, uh, you can grab yourself a calculator. Uh, so you just go over here, grab yourself a calculator, tweet, tweet, tweet. Uh, L1 and square, <coughs> go to the trigonometric vibes, and then you'll see pi is now here. Um, if you're good at maths, you'll be like, sweet, now I can use pi. But if you're bad at maths like me, you'll be like, okay, fine. I'm glad that the maths, maths kids can enjoy that. And yeah, you can pretty much just use it like that. So it makes the B value equal pi. So you can like multiply things by pi and so on and so forth. And uh, that is pretty much all there is to it, friends. Woohoo! Alrighty, friends. So those are some of the new features. Of course, there's tons of other use cases for all of these particular tools. And I hope that you use them well. I hope you enjoyed this update video and found it useful and helpful. Let me know if you have any questions or if you've come up with any great ideas. And yes, friends, thank you so much for your support. I shall catch you on the flip-flop. Peace out.